Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, we are gonna be working on this Fallout Fusion Core. This was a real fun one. Now, if you're interested in printing out your own Fallout Fusion Core, you can head over to 3dprintedprops.com where you can pick it up. There's a coupon code below, or you can head out over to my Patreon. I only have two tiers. One is four files for 12 bucks, and one is four files for 25, and that gives you the license to sell these on Etsy or wherever you want. Not the files, but the prints that you make. So head over to 3D Printed Props and pick up the files to print this out today. So I just had to make one of these after finishing the Fallout show on Amazon. Now, never played the game before, uh, but I am a huge fan of those actors. Uh, Walter Coggins, of course, Kyle MacLachlan, one of my all-time favorites. So I was really looking forward to it, and me and the whole family just loved it. I thought it just did an amazing job. Fantastic. Take a look if you want. And I was looking at the thing, and I just felt like I wanted to make this, this, uh, this fusion core. I thought it was a, just a neat little prop, and looking at it, I knew that I was gonna be able to have a lot of fun with it, with the weathering. Now, if you watch any videos on the channel, you know I love to weather things, uh, and this thing was just ripe for it, because that world is grimy and dirty, and whenever you see one of these fusion cores, they're pretty gnarly looking. Um, so I'm going to show you how to take this design, this print from this, which is super shiny, uh, and glossy to this and how I did that, what I used all in the description below. Uh, those are affiliate links. If you pick anything up from that, I get a little bit of cash, which I used to buy more of the things I used in this video. <laughs> That's how it works, right? But uh, yeah, this was a fun one. I really enjoyed it. And as a little surprise, wait till the end of this video to see what else this Fusion Core can be used for. All right, so here we go. I printed this off on my Creality K1C, and it's got some awesome quality to it. Of course, it's still going to need some sanding, so we start with a 180, a 220, a 320, and a 400. We work our way down. I'm going to take care of the seam first. Now, you can choose to, you know, alternate where the seam ends up, but I just have it go down one way. This way I know where it is. And you can see layer lines, going to have them no matter what, 3D printing. Uh, and you want to take care of those little areas. I use a file. Uh, I got a, a set. All the stuff I used here will be in my description below. There are affiliate links, and if you click on them, you, I get a little bit of cash. And I buy stuff for these videos. Now, for the filling, I use this new U-Pull putty. Uh, it's, a, it's a polyester putty, and it dries really fast, really hard. I love that it dries fast. So I go through all the areas that, you know, I didn't really want to sand too, too much more. I went ahead and sanded it down and then used the usual two-in-one primer. And now I'm going to tape this area. And I use um, pinstriping tape because it's vinyl and it bends really well. And it's perfect for these kind of things. So we use some um, painter's tape and my fingernail and then a blade to cut out the areas. And you get those nice circles like that and really happy. So I painted it uh, this nice yellow color outside, of course. Uh, I'm not allowed to spray paint indoors. <laughs> <laughs> or I get in a lot of trouble, so I don't anymore. Now, you know what you're saying, super shiny. We're going to take care of that. So we're going to paint all the metal areas uh, using just a, you know, uh, a Vallejo metal paint. Uh, they're usually um, about the same tone uh, when I was looking at some of the references. These were a little bit shinier, so this is more of a silver. I wrapped this up in a glove to cover the rest of it and painted the top part uh, with this nice metallic paint uh, and joined them together using that Bob super glue that I love. It is awesome stuff. And now we just paint this inner area black and do it nice and slow to get it just right. Now we're going to put on this little guy. I don't know what it is. Maybe the primer, maybe the uh, some type of pin. Uh, it looks kind of neat. And now we're going to have fun and weather it up. I use these Vallejo washes and just some black paint and some brown paint. Now, you can make your own washes, like just by literally using black paint and water. I just like how these um, Vallejo washes cover things and how they wipe away. I don't know. I, I really like them. So you can see we just paint over this thing to gunk it up. 
And then I like to use paper towels uh, and crumble them up and then just sort of dab it. And I'm going in there with my fingers and everything. Now, you don't want to just wipe because that would look sort of like it was done on purpose. So the dabbing of the crinkled gives it that nice textured look that you can see right there. And we're going to do that all. And this is the dark, this is the black wash. And the key to really, really weathering something is to build up your color tones because it's going to encounter different types of grime. So this is that dark brown wash, and we're just putting that right over the black. Now, one thing you could do is give each coat a coat of uh, like a clear coat so you don't accidentally wipe off any of the other uh, tones you put down. But I like to blend them together uh, to really get that look. So here again, we're using a, a dark brown, and uh, we used some black earlier, and I thought the brown would look really well here. So again, I'm painting it on, painting it on, and then just dabbing some away, leaving it there, and then I'm hitting it with an air, uh, like a, a hair dryer, in between, so I can work fast. And when it sort of sort of runs, I let that happen because I think it looks pretty neat. Now I'm going to go in with just like almost like a straight acrylic. So there's no really water in here, maybe a little bit. And I'm going to build up some darker, you know, more pronounced colors, like a rust color here. So this metallic rusted. And I'm just dabbing it with my fingers. Now these are acrylic paints. You don't really have to wear gloves here. But if you don't, by the time you're done, when you're touching everything like this, your hands are simply a mess. So I do wear gloves when I'm doing this sometimes. But you can see how when you're just using the straight, like um, a little bit of water in an acrylic paint, it is more pronounced. And you do need some pronounced tones. You, you have a major overall grime, but you know you want to show off that rust and some of where the grime collects. So of course, rust and stuff is going to collect in crevices. So that's why you add it there. Now, I love doing this. I really think it adds a whole new texture to things. And I'm just putting uh, the wash on these rough brushes and speckling it. And you really, really get a, a model look that I like. But now we need to add in some highlights. Because, yes, this is grody metallics. But let's say when the thing slides into the device, certain areas hit. And they lose their grime because they're constantly getting... Um, twisted or worn on so you use just a really rough looking brush dry brush on just a silver to give it that sort of scored and scarred up look and there we go so that is the key thing when you're just like any type of painting really is to build up your layers you could freak out when you're weathering and being like, oh my God, I'm ruining it, or oh, it's looking too much like a pattern, uh, or it doesn't look natural. You, know, you can wipe it away sometimes if you need to. The thing is to tell a story with it. Build up different grimes, <laughs> different shades. Uh, look for the cracks where dirt would end up and make sure you fill those and accentuate those. Uh, and just have fun with it because, uh, again, just weathering is a blast. Now I said there was something special with this. You might notice there is a hole in the bottom of this. Uh, if you pick up the files or my site, 3dprinterprops.com, you can get it with or without the hole in the bottom. The hole in the bottom is for this. And this is just one of those sort of, uh, uh, it's a bigger than just like a lipstick, but it's a cylindrical battery for your phone, to charge your phone. And you might've guessed it, it fits right in there. And you can push that in and it goes flush with it. And you can just turn around and plug the cable in. This is the remote. Grab your phone and plug it in. And now you got just a neat little way to charge your own phone with a fusion generator. I thought it'd be fun. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video. I appreciate you watching. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. All right. Take it easy.